Hi everybody, we're back at the Art Center Cooperative. Just so all of you know, this is on Facebook Live, we're just trying to do a double whammy here. But thank you all for coming and uh, seeing this wonderful exhibit by our featured artist, Marsha Hatcher. And she has tackled a very difficult subject matter here, and I think she's made it to where it really pulls people in, um, and really look at the pieces and wonder, well, what is this about? What is that about? So, um, one of the things I wanted to say is give you a little background about Marcia, if you're not familiar with her. She is a um, South Georgia-born artist. Uh, she lives in the Park in Jacksonville, Florida, for the past 30 years. She's a military wife for many years. Marcia has traveled around the world, and most of her art captures these experiences and the people she has met. Marcia is an artist who loves creating art, and her art defines who she is and what she is passionate about. The vast majority of her art is painted in people, color is her subject matter. Acrylic, oils, and sometimes wood is her preferred medium. Marcia has a variety of techniques when it comes to creating art. An artist whose work is in many private collections, she enjoys experimenting with color and different mediums to keep her viewers excited. Marcia has often competed in art contests where she is placed in every category. She has recently been awarded her second Art Ventures grant from the Community Foundation. Marsh received her Bachelor's of Arts degree from Albany State University, and she's a member of Hopewell Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, founding and current board member of the Dax Cultural Development Corporation, formerly JCAAA, and also a founding member of the Art Center Cooperative. Mm -hmm. So thank you everybody for coming. Um, so talking about these pieces, has anybody come in and looked and said, what are the numbers for? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, would you like to speak to it? Or? Okay, I, I can explain it. When I was asked to do this, this, this show is a continuation of a show that was done in 2019 at uh, Museum of Science and History at, at Marsh. And they were doing a show in conjunction with um, uh, the um, EJI, Equal Justice Initiative Group. Yeah out of Montgomery, Alabama, and it was on lynching. Okay, and I was asked to do it if, if, because most of their show was documents, photographs, history, a lot of, when you went to see the show, you're gonna do a lot of reading, okay? That's basically <laughs> That's what, 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 like what, what it is. A lot of reading, so they thought, well, maybe we need to add some kind of art element to what was already there. So they asked me if I could come up with something to add accompany the show and at first I felt like you know that's a really a tough subject matter and, and I didn't really want it because of the research that is involved you're going to see a lot of ugly pictures of history from the past and I like I, I don't know what I could possibly do to kind of soften the blow because it, it's really a lot to, to consume for anyone to, to walk into an exhibit. I don't know if anybody's ever been to the exhibit in Montgomery, but that that is that is overwhelming. So I'm thinking, I, I don't want to put anybody on like some kind of guilt trip or, or some kind of blame game. So what, what I thought I'd do, because there was like 12 states, like the top 12 states, uh, not every state had, had lynching involved but so I just did the research so I thought hmm how could I let each person from each state each flag represent so what I did is I the rocks that you see in the background of the pictures the people there they're all people that were lynched okay the rocks in the in the box the way it started out what I did every time I, a cop kill, we have like modern day lynching as well. Every time the cop kills somebody unjustifiably, for no cause became the judge, jury, and executioner. And of course they, they show the, the face. I, I would put it on a rock and draw the face on a rock and put it in the box. Every time they did, I'd draw the face and put it in the box. So eventually that turned into what became the, the lynching, uh, faces on, on, on the pit. But most of those are historical faces from the people 
a lot of people's faces aren't was available, okay? It's not like they took pictures of everybody right before the next show. But some people, they do have, so I had to do a lot of searching for a lot of the faces that you see there. But the number on each one is the number of people that were lynched in that state. Each, like the, the state of um, uh, Florida here, Georgia, Louisiana, all these, that is the number they are responsible for. And because uh, the uh, justice, equal justice initiative people, what they did, we were doing a lot of research in history. So some of the, some of the numbers have changed because they've, they've added, the numbers have grown. Because these, the numbers that you see that are published are the ones that we know of. There's a lot that didn't get, you know, covered. It just happened and the people were forgotten about or it, it just wasn't documented. You know, some was documented, because some like, uh, I think it was the state of Louisiana, was, was proud of their number. If, if you wanna, you know, like, we're pinching capital of the world, you know. We've got 800. But anyway, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But some of us, so not everybody thought it was a good idea to, to document. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much y'all already know, but all of this is, is, can be a Google away if, if you're really interested in, in, in some of it. Uh, any questions so far? Yes, ma'am? Strange Fruit. Oh, okay. Strange Fruit. I actually, when I did the show at the uh, Marsh, I created a three-dimensional tree, which I didn't bring it for here. So I, I just kind of used the paper tree right here as as my uh, strange fruit tree, mm -hmm. and that 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 idea came from the song uh, from Billie Holiday mm -hmm. back in the sixties, I believe. She wrote a song about a strange. Fruit and, and what she was referring to really is is because they did most of the majority of their lynching from trees that the trees had strange fruit hanging from them, which basically were, were people that they they called the, the strange fruit. So I kind of like uh, decided I'd do a paper tree, and the, of course the strings on the on the, the trees it kind of represent a person that. Was, is not longer there and has been taken down. But some was left up for days just to show you what, give other people something to think about if you decide to go against the grain. They said, yes, this, this is what will happen. So that, that's where the strange fruit uh, is. What's the grain? That's just the dropping of the fruit from the tree to the ground, mm -hmm. and of course the regeneration of, you know, some kind of fruit. If you think of it as a, as a, like a, like a fruit tree, I don't know how many farmers in the house, but I'm just going to guess that when you got a, a peach tree or apple tree and it drops to the ground and you don't pick it up, it could possibly make another tree that's, is that not how it works? That's just, just what I thought. I'll explain this one right here for you, because somebody asked me about this, this right, this piece right here. I didn't put all the white rocks, but I'm going to let you guess what the white rocks represent, okay? A lot of times I don't like to explain every single thing, because I don't want to influence what you think, okay? But this one is called, we are safe when we know our place. Mm. 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 Okay, so whatever you can kind of guess at, like what's happening here, with, with the, the rocks up here, on the rocks down here, as long as these rocks stay right here, we are, we okay. Mm. It's that when we try to, if we turn our attention to this one over here, which is called a glass ceiling, is that when we try to rise up above the rocks that's in place, some make it through. Okay, and, and we've had quite a few to make it through, and one of them has been the President uh, Barack Obama that has managed to work his way through the, through the 
layer, okay, and question. Okay, not, not all at once now. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that B A R O C K Obama? Okay. Uh, <laughs> how, how troubling was this for you to put this together? Well, it was at, at first. I, I really didn't want to do not not the one here, but when I was asked to do the one at Marsh, because it is ugly and it's depressing and it's sad. Okay, and then I, I, I think I had like way over 100 rocks that I had, had uh, drew on because I, and I, that's another story of why rock, why not other things, but, but I, I, I'll give you a hint on why rocks. But I just think every time I've ever seen anything on lynching, it has never been pretty, okay? And I've, if you, if you will, try to make it not necessarily pretty, but not so ugly. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's very okay. So, so it is not a turn off because the last thing I would want to do is go to an exhibit and it's just like I did in Montgomery. It's depressing. So at the end of the tunnel, would you like to see at least a bright light on the other side? Mm -hmm. So. Although this happened in the past, it's still like some of the rocks that's in the basket over there. Th those, those people died like last week, last month. So we, we still lynching just not with a, with a rope and a tree, okay? Mm -hmm. Every time a cop kills somebody for, I don't know, a busted tail light, it's lynching. And, and it's not just black people that are being lynched. I understand that. But if you've got a story, an artist is a, a truth teller. If you've got a story that you think people ought to know, uh, it, what better way to do it is, is through art, if, if you're not as gory. Because this can be really, really ugly, and that is not my intentions whatsoever. I just want you to come in and look like, oh, that's nice. Now, I got you to look. So at least you're interested, because you could very easily walk into the building and say, oh, no, not, that's not for me. I, I, I'm not even going to try that. Okay, but I, I kind of kind of pull you in a little bit and see how far you would, uh, how much information you're willing to, to receive. That's it. You all good? <laughs> um, one thing she pointed out is her, her picture over here is like it's something to look at, but it's She's like, oh. okay, this, I, I need a little brief, well, this particular piece of call, hey, it's a combination of, of me taking a picture of a gate with a chain around it, and then I added the face, and the face I choose to add, with, of course, I don't know what Mary Turner looked like, so, but I call it Uppity Mary, Mary T, this particular one, and this is a story of a of a young girl, she's married, uh, she's 18, the husband is 25, he's Turner, he was accused of having killed someone, okay, and then back then in the day, you know, all you have to do is just say, yep, he did it, and boom, you, you were hanging from a tree, no judge, no jury, no nothing, you know, uh, but she was defending her husband. And she got a little uppity, okay? And back in the day, it was never a good, uh, never a good idea to be uppity. Because what uppity meant, and I'm not even sure if we, we, we pinned that term anyway, but uppity means that you are outspoken. You see a wrong, you're going to say something, okay? She was that type of woman. Although she was only 18, she was married, she saw that her husband was accused of something that she knew he didn't do, but it didn't matter, it didn't matter. As long as you got somebody to pay the crime, it really didn't matter whether you did it or not. That's, that's the injustice that was taking place during the time. But Mary, she spoke up, gutsy. You don't want to do that, not back then. But she spoke up and she said that, no, she was, she was going to sue, I don't know if she was going right. to sue, but, but she got up there and so after they hung her husband the next day because she was talking trash, 
they hung her, and they, and they decided to make an example out of her in case somebody else wanted to be ugly. So we, we're not going to hang you like we hung him. We're going to hang you from the bridge upside down. And then we're going to shoot you with all kind of bullets. And then because you're pregnant, we're going to cut the baby out and the baby fell. And then, ooh, baby's still alive. So use your imagination what happened to baby. But anyway, that, that's, that's the story. It's Mary Turner. If you Google it, you can find that story. And, and, and what caught my eye on her, actually I got a, another one using this same image here of her husband, at least my perception of her husband. And the story is more about what she did than what he did. Which, you know, her story, I guess because he was, he was just tamed, so that's she not was the a same. Woman. Yeah, she was a woman. Michelle Obama was considered uppity. Uh, see? Yeah. <laughs> you know what uppity means, yeah. women. Yeah. There's no uppity men. It's always yeah. uppity women. Okay, yeah. women who talk too much. You know, women who don't take no for an answer. Women that want to push the, the envelope, so to speak. Okay, you will become uppity because you speak your mind. You don't let people get away with anything. Okay? Be uppity, okay? Be uppity for us all. Anyway. Probably a lot of us in this room. Get in some good Exactly! Good to get in some good trouble. I like it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank this you, was Marcia. truly beautiful. Amazing, Marsha. You're, you're welcome. Any, troubling. Any yes. Yes. Troubling. This, this is a story like many other stories that, that has to be told. Uh, Sometimes you can't always learn this, and this by design, in school. Okay. In fact, most of what you know probably was not taught to you in school. Right. Okay, a lot, of, a lot of stuff you have to learn on your own if you want to be well rounded and know what's going on in the world. So uh, there's a lot of stories, and uh, everybody's responsible for, you know, if you've got a story to tell, and you're an artist, and it's like your duty to, to make it known if you like. Thank you. This Thank has you. been a wonderful day. Wonderful. Oh, you I didn't know. I was like, oh, Yeah, when she told me about that, I, I had, I didn't realize, I didn't get the name together. I had read the story, and I was like, it was one of the most horrific things I'd ever read. And then when I realized who it was, it was like. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a, a pretty story, and, and I was hoping that I wouldn't have to explain it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was just going to say, look it up. Yeah. Yeah, just Google it. I'm yeah. sure you can find it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Please come in. This is it up. This exhibit, if you haven't come to see it yet, is up till October, no, September 10th. So um, please come in and take a look. Read um, the artist statement. Read about Marsha on her biography. And um, I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's very enlightening. Thank you.